I'm sorry if you can hear a fan this whole video. I'm also sorry if my nipples pop out, but it's hot. Okay, I don't have aircon in my room yet. Hey, what's Damo? And I am apparently a mental health icon. Look, I'm okay with that. That's absolutely fine by me. Because I've been approached by two companies to make mental health videos for two different days that are actually back to back. The first one being Headspace Day, which is today, October 9th, and tomorrow being World Mental Health Day, October 10th. Surprisingly enough, it was Headspace who reached out to me about Headspace Day, but it was Better Help that reached out to me about World Mental Health Day. So the, this video is for both of them. This is a sponsored video in a way. I'm not making money directly. I was gonna make a mental health video anyway, so here it is. I've just got companies supporting me. Thank you for that. So the whole idea behind Headspace Day, other than like this fancy badge, ooh, wow, wow, cool, is that you share something that gets you out of a bad headspace. When I'm not in a good headspace, blank. Helps me feel better. It was really hard to read backwards in the screen for the second there. So I'm gonna share some things that I do to make me feel better when I'm feeling just a little bit shit because, you know, that's pretty frequent. Dance. Uh, should I turn this down? No, I'll just, po I'll edit it later. You can, you can probably read it. I, I said it anyway. Dance. Since I am a dancer, obviously I enjoy dancing, but I mean, it's something so freeing about just putting on music and letting yourself go regardless of whether you have training or not. I think it's a really therapeutic thing to do, so maybe give it a go. Just... Knock your fucking tits out. Knock yourself out with your tits. If you got tits. Clean. Clean. I'm, I'm from for cereals. I'm for doing for reals right now. I think the cleaning is great because if you have a tidy space, it helps you tidy your head space. See what I did there? Mixing it up with that promo. Give me, give me more promos. No, but seriously, I find that if my, my living area, my work area or whatever is messy, I feel a lot less productive and it's a lot easier for me to slip into a depressive state. So if I have a clean space, I find I definitely do have a clean headspace. Sorry, I'll stop now. Draw and or paint, you know, just sort of create smart, mate. Just do it. Even if you're not very good at it, because I'm not great. I'm just, you know, passable because I do it a lot. It can be great for your sadness. It can also be terrible for your anxiety. I mean, in all honesty, sometimes I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna draw, that'll cheer me up. And then I just get really frustrated because I'm like, I was better than this a year ago. Why did I stop practicing? Uh, and then I just get anxiety instead of depresso. Um, but you know, sometimes it's great. So give it a go. Eat. <laughs> that A looks like a penis. I mean, it's probably not the healthiest way to deal with depression, but I fucking love food. I don't just mean eat comfort food, although I do love comfort food. God help me, I do fucking love a drumstick. <laughs> but I mean, like, eat something fancy, eat something special, like cook something up that you've never done before and, you know, get with it. Get with it, just enjoy yourself, uh, treat yourself to something fancy. <laughs> Gay. No, but seriously, YouTube is definitely a creative outlet. It is something that lets me express myself and get my feelings out. So it is very, very good for my mental health. Um, that's why sometimes I just do videos that are really fucking weird because I just need a break and I just need to be weird. And sometimes I really just want to talk about something that's on my mind. You know, YouTube's great. I mean, it's not for everyone, obviously. And if you start getting obsessive about it, then it's terrible for your mental health. But it's good for me because I think I finally figured out how to balance that. Maybe sometimes I don't, but mm. <laughs> At the risk of sounding like one of those people who's like, you should try yoga, I used to be depressed and then I did a downward dog, now the sun shines out of my ass. At the risk of sounding like that person, getting outside and getting some exercise, getting some fresh air is absolutely amazing for your mental health. Uh, literally, scientifically, because vitamin D is good for depression. So get some. Personally, I love just getting out there and going for a hike somewhere I've never been before with amazing views and just cool shit to see. But also just to walk around where I live is great. Just like the local things. That's all I can really think of off the top of my head, but I guess the general theme for mine are creative outlets and exercise. Except for eating, that's just, that's just great. <laughs> now for World Mental Health Day, BetterHelp wanted me to share a story of my depression or anxiety, so I thought I'd try and go with something a bit positive and talk about how I not really overcame my depression, but definitely learned how to manage it better and how that's positively affected my life. As many of you know, I frequently work as a dancer, performer, actor, singer, whatever the, whatever, wherever money's coming from, wherever it's coming from, I'm doing it. And sometimes I work on a cruise ship and not that long ago, I was doing just that. I was working as a dancer, singer, actor on a cruise ship and it should be a pretty sweet job uh, realistically because there is a lot of travel, 
free food, free rent, and I'm doing what I love. So it should be a pretty sweet gig. Unfortunately, this particular contract was uh, just a little bit dodgy. I won't really say more than that, but I will say that uh, we were working 13 hour days and it just, we hadn't had a day off for two weeks and it shouldn't have been legal, but apparently it was. I was pushed to my absolute limit and I'm no stranger to hard work. I've been dancing since the age of six and I started working professionally. The hell? And I started working professionally as a dancer at the age of 17, so I'm no stranger to rehearsals, long hours, all of that, physical, whatever, I'm used to it. But damn, this shit was hard. <laughs> Where a normal cruise ship does like maybe four shows, we were doing 11. Um, so it was a bit of, bit of a difference. And the hours were just insane and the conditions were appalling and to be honest, I was so busy hating this job and being tired all the time that I didn't have time to feel depressed if that makes any sense. Because I'd be at work and we'd be learning something and I'd suddenly feel really sad and want to start crying, but I'd be like, no, I can't go cry because I'm gonna miss this choreography so I have to just suck it up and do it. And even if that means crying while learning the choreography, then whatever. I mean, was it particularly graceful? No, but I mean, I tried my hardest. And then I think eventually it got to the point where I kind of conditioned my brain like you condition a little child where every time they act out, you don't respond, you don't give them what they want. And I didn't give my brain what what it wanted. I didn't cave in to the sad. So eventually it just learned that there was no point in chucking a tantrum and making me cry because I wasn't gonna go sit in the bathroom and waste an hour feeling sad. I was just gonna get on with my job. If that makes any sense at all. I'm not saying this will work for everyone. I'm not saying it'll work for anyone else. I'm not saying it's healthy. I'm just saying it it definitely helped me because when I did eventually have more time I have just realized the time that I was normally sad just I wasn't sad anymore. I just kind of taught it not to happen. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I definitely do still suffer from depression and anxiety. It's just kind of not as dominating in my life as it used to be, which is a really liberating feeling. It's very rare that I get such depressive thoughts or such anxiety that I can't push it back and just get on with my life now, which is really amazing and is such a huge turning point in my life. So I really hope that something like that can help you if you are going through the same thing and just know that it is possible. You can get better, basically. I don't know if you can ever be completely healed, but you can definitely get better. Of course, all of that being said, one of the best ways to get better is to seek out help through friends, family, or even professionally. And if you don't have the access to professional help, Better help is something that might work perfectly for you, so I thought this was a great partnership for me because it enables me to connect you with someone who might be able to help. Basically, Better Help is an online counselling service that's a lot more affordable and a lot more efficient since you don't have to actually leave your house. When you sign up for the website, you answer a bunch of questions and they actually pay you up with a suitable therapist. And if you don't like that one, you can always change and you can put in preferences such as male or female, LGBT friendly, all sorts of things. You can schedule as many sessions as your therapist schedule will allow. You can even text and email them between schedules all for as low as $35 a week, which honestly, for professional help, is pretty damn good. Uh, it's, it's pretty damn good. If you are struggling with mental health and struggling to find help, I definitely recommend you check out BetterHelp, because if this was something I knew about when I was at my worst, I definitely would have considered using it, as uh, I always found the idea of therapists to be a bit daunting, and maybe online would be a lot more accessible. So I'm definitely, I'm definitely here for this digital movement of therapists. Therapy. Digital movement of therapy. Let's do it. So that's pretty much it for this video. Thank you very much to BetterHelp and Headspace for reaching out to me and for sponsoring this video and just spreading the word of mental health and letting everyone know that, you know, it is something that a lot of people go through and that's okay and there are resources to help you. Uh, like that. That's for you. I encourage you in the comments or on your Twitter or on anything to share what you might do to pull you out of a depressive mood or a, a bad headspace, or maybe share a story of you overcoming depression or anxiety just to show that it is something that happens. You can get better. You can feel depression is not forever. Thank you very much for watching this video. I will see you in the next one, but until then, fuck off.